How many hours a day would you say you use your smartphone? I would say I use my smartphone about six hours out of the day, maybe more. Uh, I would say I use my smartphone probably two hours a day. I use my smartphone at least six hours a day. I got two of them and a smartwatch, and I'm fascinated with technology. Do you think Wi-Fi is safe or unsafe? I think Wi-Fi is safe depending on the network that you're on. So if you're on a network that is uh, uh, provided for you and by you and it's your network, it would be safe. If you're on a public network, maybe not so safe. I'll probably log on a public Wi-Fi a couple hours out of the day. The public Wi-Fi, I try and stay away from it and stay on my 4G. Personally, it makes me feel more safe. I feel secure using my phone in public Wi-Fi. I guess I feel secure because I've never really thought about it. I feel comfortable using public Wi-Fi even though it's unsecure. I'm using a good VPN, so no worries. Today, we're setting the record straight on internet privacy and internet safety. Don't think it's that big a problem? Well, think again. The average person checks their cell phone 100 times a day, and that's not even counting your computer. And hacking into all of your personal information, passwords, bank account numbers, everything, it's as easy as downloading some free software. That's all it takes. So how to protect your identity online? Here to explain is tech guru and internet privacy specialist, Ted Kim. Ted, it is so great to have you here Hi, today. Thank you. It's I have great so to be many here. questions. <laughs> I hope you have all the answers. I will do my best. <laughs> First of all, what is the biggest mistake that we make? Well, I think the biggest thing that you have to concern yourself when it comes to the internet is to understand how we access it. That okay. means the different ways that we we um, communicate with the internet. And that can be your computer, but also your laptop, your tablet, your cell phone. So that's one area. The other area is also to identify how are you accessing it, meaning how do you plug into the internet? And if you're on an unsecured public Wi-Fi, for example, right. and that could be like a library or an airport or a coffee shop or anywhere where it makes it amazingly convenient because you can access your data and transmit oh, information yeah, it's, it's everywhere you go. Oh, yeah, it's convenient, but it's not Fantastic. safe, right? No, totally unsafe because the fact that you can access it, and we think about these things geographically, but the Internet is global. Right? Yeah. It makes us all connected everywhere. Yeah. So somebody from 3,000 miles away could be accessing that network and you could potentially be vulnerable. Okay, so what about Wi-Fi that is password protected? Well, that's a little better because at least you know there's a password associated with it. But then again, if it's not your network that you're controlling, like I'm staying at a hotel, right? right? And I need a password to get in there, but everybody is accessible to that network that has that password. So again, oh if somebody, God. for example, knows I'm there, then they can ostensibly have my password and be able to access that network, in which case they're in and they have um, access to anybody who's utilizing that network, network's information. You know, what about the internet? I mean, aren't there so many malicious websites on the internet too? Yeah, you really have to be careful because, yeah. you know, the way that it happens now, um, you know, th it could be anywhere, just, just not a website. It could be an email that you get that looks like it's from, say, uh, Google or, or yes. iTunes or anything yes. like that that so says, update your password and information. You might oh click on gosh. it, but it could just be somebody else putting up a website. So now they have your username and they have your password. And then, on top of that, most people don't change their passwords for every website. So then if they've identified your email address and your password, they can go anywhere with it. How do we avoid, you know, Wi-Fi and websites? That's basically everything. Yeah, you really can't avoid Wi-Fi and <laughs> websites. I mean, it's the internet, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's changed the way we communicate, it's changed the way we learn and we're entertained. We, we can't avoid it now. But all we can do is try to understand what we're doing on it. Not think about things geographically, but understand that anytime we connect to the internet, anybody in the world could potentially have access to your data. What do we do to protect ourselves online? Well, I mean, there's a few things that you could do. One is uh, data tracking and data monitoring becomes okay. a big issue because what that really means is your IP address, think about it like your home address or your physical address. Right. So if I know your computer is going to this website, then everything that you do coming out of that is associated with your IP address. So I can monitor all of your activity wherever you go. That's kind of a scary idea. So one thing you can do is you can mask your IP and you can hide it and you can make sure that people don't know that it's you and you can have some privacy and security and surf the web anonymously. So is there software out there that can actually do that? Yeah, I mean, there are basic things that you can do. I would think about it like, like you would your home. You, okay. There's antivirus and anti-malware software that's okay. out there. 
So that's been out there for a long time. But those are the locks on your doors and windows. Yeah. But sometimes we go beyond that. The next level beyond that is something called a VPN, which is a virtual private network. Okay. And you can think about that as if it's advanced security, right? So that provides the masking of the IP and it encrypts your data so that it essentially creates a tunnel between the device and the website you're going to and so that all of that is private. that's what your company does, and right? And that's what we do. Where can we go to find out more about your company? PrivateInternetAccess.com okay. is where you can go. And you know, based on that, we have links that will supply information and uh, really get you to whatever answers you need to be at. Okay, it's, this is such important information. I am so glad you're here because I am unprotected. <laughs> I know a lot of our viewers are, and I'm so excited that you're coming back to join us and give us some more insight and scoop. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being Thanks, here. Julie. Very, it. very good news today. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, you can also log on to thebalancingact.com for more info, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well.